guys, I just want to go over a little bit of infection control terminology. This really won't be that long of a lecture, but I just want to make sure that everybody's kind of aware of what's going on with this. So let's kind of get into this. Um, the things you'll want to know about this, this is just things that might pop up on the board. So just make sure you understand this terminology. Again, this is pretty bare bones, um, but understanding that the sterile field is usually those blue colored things. So the outside of the mask, the um, blue, like if you're going to do wound care, you like lay down a blue dressing kind of thing. Um, this is an area that must remain free of microorganisms to avoid contamination. So again, you'll be doing all your proper hand washing techniques and stuff like that to create a sterile field. And then you must maintain the sterile field. So parts of the sterile field that are going to be important to know for the NPTE are that the back of the gown and below the waist are not sterile. So anything on the back of the gown, not sterile. Um, anything below the waist, not sterile. That's why you'll see everybody coming into the OR with their arms up high to show that they're in front of them and then that they are maintaining the sterile field. Um, if you break the sterile field, everyone has to basically scrub back in. It's really annoying and they have to re-sterilize the field. So if you ever get to observe a surgery, don't be the person to break the sterile field. Um, and again, when you're working with somebody and like, let's say that you're doing wound care and you break your sterile field, you have to like, you know, degown, re-sanitize, readdress the area, just start the whole process over again. Because if you keep going and you broke the sterile field and then the patient gets an infection, you are 100% liable for that because you did not follow protocol. So don't be that guy. Um, hand washing is the number one way to avoid contamination. So wash your damn hands, fam. Warm soapy water for at least 30 seconds. Get in all the nooks and crannies of your hands and everything. Um, and it must be warm water with soap. Don't touch the handle. Use a paper towel to turn it on and off. Um, a lot of hospitals have like foot controls as well to like press a, the, one of the, like it's like a gas pedal almost. So you press on it and then I'll have the warm water. So you don't even have to like worry about like touching a towel or anything. So just be aware of that. All jewelry must be removed prior to washing your hands and the hands must be washed if they're soiled. So if you get any sort of gunk on your hands, you must wash them. A lot of places, unless somebody's on some sort of like precautions, most of the time you're just going in from like, let's say it's a hospital, just room to room. Um, you can sanitize your hands and that's okay. Uh, but hand washing, if anybody's on any sort of precautions, like, <laughs> like uh, contact precautions or something like that. Uh, personal protective equipment. I think we're pretty familiar with these. I have a video on like um, when you would use different types of these. So go watch the um, precautions video to know which type of PPE you should use for which disease and whatnot. Um, but basically they're used to protect you and to protect the patient from infections. So big thing is we're protecting the patient from getting an infection from somebody else in another room. Um, so various precautions are going to require various different types of protection. Um, so the typical, if we're going to go into a regular person's room um, and there's nothing crazy going on. Usually gloves are fine, but always make sure you hand wash first. So hand washing, number one, wash your hands and put on some gloves. Um, some places glove and gown everyone. Um, other things that you can wear are like goggles or any sort of visors, eye protection sort of thing, um, masks. So anything from surgical masks, which is just your stereotypical run of the mill mask, or um, to like N95 and paper masks or respirators, uh, foot booties to protect yourself from any sort of splashing. Yeah, splashes. Um, there's a lot of different types of PPE. Some people are dressed head to toe and stuff, but these are just some examples of it. Um, most of the time gloves and gowns will be like the most common that you see. Um, but as we get into people with like droplet precautions and stuff that can splatter, you're covering more things and hair protection. There's also head protection too. Uh, there's a lot, but if you want to know which, uh, different types of, um, protection you use for which conditions, go watch our precautions video. Um, contamination basically is exactly what it says when a surface comes in contact with a diseased microorganism. So we don't want this. So that's what we're avoiding with all of the sterile field sort of stuff going on. Um, the big thing about these is that uh, there's different types of asepsis. So asepsis by itself literally just means you have created a sterile field, field A being none, sepsis being infection. So there are no infections. That's how we break down this word. Um, so there's no microorganisms present. This is what we want to maintain with our patients. If we break our sterile field, we got to reset. Uh, medical asepsis is basically where they put a patient in a specific type of room to isolate them 
Um, this is what we think of when we have like airborne precautions or something like that. Um, thinking of like COVID patients that are kept in isolation rooms. Um, basically, we're keeping the dangerous microorganism to that specific room to avoid the spread of the disease. So like the disease can exist in this controlled uh, space and everything outside of the space needs to maintain, you know, sterility and everything. So keeping something in one place. Then surgical asepsis is what we think about when we're creating a sterile field in surgery. And then, you know, the scrub nurses are yelling at you if you're messing up anything. Um, the, you know, technicians are yelling at you if you're messing up at any of their sterile field, like don't be that guy. Um, so essentially you're creating a sterile field in a surgical manner to avoid microorganism contamination. And again, remember, Anytime the skin is exposed or like the skin is cut into, you're putting the patient at risk for infection. That includes skin breakdown from like prosthetics or like positioning the patient and surgery or any sort of lacerations or cuts. Anytime that happens, the patient's at risk for infection. You don't want to be that guy who lets the patient have an open wound and then get an infection and then get sepsis and die. Don't be that guy. That is why we are so crazy like strict about this because that is literally what will happen if we let a patient who's severely immunocompromised get an infection. So let's talk about our sample question, guys. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient diagnosed with colostridium difficile. Uh, which of the following precautions should the physical therapist assistant take first before treating this patient? One, apply PPE. So it will be written out as personal protective equipment. Uh, two, establish a medical sterile field. Three, perform proper hand washing techniques, or four, establish a sepsis. So I'll give you guys a second to think about this one. All right, guys, so the answer is going to be perform proper hand washing techniques. So again, this is step one. So step one is wash the damn hands. Step two, apply PPE. Step three, Established sterile field. So that's our order of how we will do this. Establishing a sepsis and establishing a medical sterile field is pretty much along the same thing. So a sepsis would be establishing the sterile field. Um, uh, step two would be make sure the patient's in an isolation room, which you never know where they'll end up. So you just got to make sure like that's not our job to put them in a specific isolation room. That's already done by somebody else. We're not dealing with that, but basically that answer is quote unquote irrelevant for what we're going to be doing in this, um, in this question. The most important thing before you go to treat this patient, before you try to like do anything crazy is make sure you wash your hands because if you have to move the patient or like you're moving them into a room where they need to be in isolation, if that's what your job is, cause you're helping with mobility, you got to make sure you wash your hands first. That's pretty much what's going on because the patient could be in like an observation room and then they need help with mobility, um, moving them into a like closed room. You might be involved with that. Who knows? Maybe they all of a sudden, you know, they spawned a disease and now you're like, oh crap, well, we got to get them into the isolation room. So, you know, why don't we walk there? It's a couple rooms down. Like, let's put on some mass protective equipment and like, let's go. But before you do any of that, before anything's happening with any patient, anywhere wash your hands don't worry about anything else until your hands are washed so if your hands aren't washed all this other stuff can't happen so hope that was helpful guys i know this was short but i'll see you on the next one take care